In other words, he purposed it. He didn't want to make to leave any room for doubt of what could have happened. It was delivered on the side of God to make it clear that the crossing of the Jordan River was by divine power and not by, not by human imagination. You know that sometimes in our Christian experience when you are having difficulties in life that sometimes God delays to come. And deliberately so. If you remember the story of Razos, they sent somebody to go and tell Jesus that Razos was sick. And Jesus answered, Oh, I have heard. But he never went until Lazarus died and was buried for four days. And when he went there, he says, I'm the what? The resurrection and the life. There are times when God, you might be going through a difficult situation, still hold on to God, he'll come through. Amen. The reason why these things happen is that sometimes as human beings, we mistake what is called divine providence for a miracle. There's a difference between divine providence, Elder Mata, and a miracle. I'll give an example of divine providence to illustrate the point. If you don't agree with me, for the time being, just agree with me so that you are together. Look at Elijah. When he is running away from Ahab, and he is told, go to Zeraph Zerapeth. And there you find a widow. And she'll give you food. At a point when the widow gave Elijah food, it was not a miracle. It was divine providence. Human beings cannot do what God is able to do. But at the time when the oil and the the, 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 the flower began to multiply without finishing. That was the miracle. So the miracle which God caused for the crossing of the Jordan was necessary for two reasons. The first reason was to assure Israel of his divine presence. And the second one was to send a strong message to the inhabitants of Canaan that there was a God among Israel. You see, at the time when God opened the Red Sea and Israel crossed 40 years ago, the people of Palestine were worried. Who are these people? But when they saw them go back in the wilderness, some of them began to doubt. So God we had to send a message in Battles and Prophets 485 and paragraph 1. See, the Bible speaks to prophet says to the Canaanites and to all Israel and to Joshua himself, unmistakable evidence had been given that the living God, the king of heaven and earth, was among his people, and that he would not fail them nor forsake them. Now sometimes we get tempted, my brothers and sisters. There are a lot of times we get tempted in life to focus on what we can do and not focusing what God can do for us and for ourselves. And it was necessary now for God to assure Joshua. In Joshua 1 and verse 5, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. At the time we were doing comprehension in school, we'd want to pick a key passage or a key phrase in a, in a passage. For me this morning, I felt that in this particular chapter of Joshua, the way that says, I will not leave you or forsake you, is a key passage. And that each one of us can move with it. And of course, later on, he talks about the book of the law, not to part from it. And that prosperity was dependent on children of Israel walking in that law and keeping it. And then I shall make your way prosperous. 
one of the words that has appeared four times there's a way that has appeared four times in just one chapter when god is addressing joshua in chapter chapter one and verse six he says be strong and of good courage in verse seven only be strong and very courageous in verse nine have i not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the lord your god is with you and towards the end of the chapter verse 18 only be strong and good courage What's, what is courage then courage then my brothers and sisters i want to suggest to you is a quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty danger pain without fear that's courage in the modern use of language courage is called fear overcome when god leads us he doesn't remove all the obstacles and all the things that can cause doubt neither does he move all difficulties and pain in life because if he did that it will no longer be faith because faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen so if god was going to remove every difficult out of our way if god was to remove every doubt out of the way then it will not be faith but what he promises is that i will be with you i will never leave you nor forsake you what a promise he says be faithful to me and i'll never leave you nor forsake you that's god for you you remember but even when he says that and he gives that promise of him being with us and never forsaken us he still remains invisible he still remains invisible he can only be seen by faith during those difficult times of life when sometimes it becomes difficult for us to appreciate and even later on understand that there's a god who cares he can only be seen by faith you remember stephen as he was being accused and stoned he stood alone with no one to stand by his side but when he looked up he saw the face of jesus so even in difficult times we can still see the face of jesus we must still remember to look up and also recollect what i call the gps of life it is god for g who gives it is god for p who preserves and it is him who sustains life so we can still trust in, in him go over this jordan and one interesting aspect that happened in the next chapters if you recall as israel were moving from egypt to canaan they were being laid by the cloud during the day and the pillar of fire in the night exodus chapter 13 and verse 21 and the lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them to lead the way and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night but i see that as they are approaching jordan his methods had changed because now they are not going to be led by the cloud or the pillar of fire but they are going to be led by the ark that contained the commandments joshua chapter 3 and verse 3 the bible says and when they had commanded the people saying when you see the ark of the covenant of the lord you go god and the priests and the river is bearing it then you shall set out from your place and go after it so this time they are to be laid by the ark that contains the commandments sometimes god might change his methods and strategies the way he leads us one singer once sang 
that I don't need to understand. But I just, want, I just need to hold your hand. So when we, anywhere Jesus lead, leads us, we just have to hold his hand and follow him. And as they were advancing towards the water, the priests that were carrying the ark, the river Jordan was still flowing with the velocity and speed. It was not giving up. It was still relentless. There was still a risk that those people, if they stepped into the water, the water would have swept them. But they marched in forward in faith. And the record says, as soon as the people that were in front were about to step in the water, that is when the water parted. Amen. And then Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Amen. And before they could, they could cross the water completely, he commanded one person from every tribe to go and pick a stone. And after they picked a stone, they made a monument to remember. It says, when your children ask, you tell them that God led us through this way. So it's important, my brothers and sisters, for you and me to remember how God has led us in the past. We will only be afraid of the future if we forget how God has led us in the past. And when they crossed the Jordan River, the circumcision, right of circumcision that was suspended was reinstated. Not only that, the Passover also was suspended. It was also reintroduced. Is there a warning for us? That sometimes when you go through life, God can suspend certain blessings from us because of our unbelief. You know the Seventh Adventist Church? I take it, uh, for those of us that were not born as Adventists, we take it that the Seventh Adventist Church is not a church like any other church. It has got a premium value. So the members cannot live and behave like other churches. You know, God has given this church a mission which he hasn't given the Baptist. And they prepare what? I thought to show to He hasn't given them that mission. Not even the Jehovah's Witness. We have got a special mission to do in this world. And Sister Wright comments again in the same chapter of Patriots and Prophets. The suspension of the right of circumcision. Since the rebellion of Kaddish had been a constant witness to Israel that their covenant with God, of which it was appointed symbol, had been broken. And the discontinuance of the Passover, the memorial of their deliverance from Egypt, had been evidence of the Lord's pleasure and their desire to return to the land of bondage. Now, however, the years of rejection were ended. Once more, God acknowledged Israel as his people, and the sign of his covenant was restored. God is able to restore if we come to him in faith. And something else that happened in Joshua chapter 5 and verse 12 is that manna stopped falling. All, all the 40 years, manna was falling. But verse 12 says, then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. So a manna miracle was provided every day apart from Sabbath, six days in a week. But upon entering the promised land, God's promise of provision would take a new form. He would still provide, but his promise of provision would take a new form. Well, God would still be their provider, they would learn personal responsibility from working the land and eating from it. Another change of method and strategy. Go over this Jordan. There's sufficient grace. I think I should go towards ending the sermon before some of you sleep or before the preacher is tempted to shout to keep some of you awake. 
know the year might have been difficult, my brothers and sisters, and it should have been. The tempests and the storms, the heartaches, the disappointments, and all the difficult situations you go through, the sickness and even death. But there are sufficient reserves from God of grace that we can draw from. To Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. So as we go over this Jordan, we need to hold on to his promise that I will, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Hold on to him who holds the future. Amen. Hold on to him who holds the future. Because it will not be long. Our Lord shall return. And when he returns, the pain that we go through, the heart plagues that we go through, the disappointments that we go through, and even the weeping that we do may just endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And when he comes, we'll taste of the manna again. Because in Revelation chapter 2 verse 17 says, and he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I'll give him some of the hidden manna to eat. And then we will rest in that fair and happy land. When the very says of Pumula. And the Lord is selling your Pumula. And the Chewa has said the Pumula. And the members said to Kachusha. To Kachusha. To Kachusha. And the Tonga said to the Chewa Yoga Yoga. And on all those wide extended plains shines one eternal day. And crushed therein the sun forever rains and scatters night away. And that's why I suggest that we sing the closing song in the traditional fashion who we'll rest in that fair and happy land. Just across the evergreen shore, there will sing the song of Moses the Lamb by and by and dwell with Jesus evermore. May God bless you. Shall the church raise? As we sing our closing songs, I think we've uh, seen all those little papers that are besides us. What? Hymn Six number 419. Is. But if you have uh, your local languages, please let's sing in our local languages. Yes. 419 and, and 620. Yes, church. Six twenty, yes.
one who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his glory. To our God, our Father, who alone is mighty and wisdom, be power and dominion. May the Lord keep you and bless you. May the Lord let his countenance shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.